We have a dynamical system model of chemical pollution in a lake where a factory is dumping chemical into a lake at the rate r kilograms per day. The lake has volume v and there's a river that flows with rate f through the lake each day. If w sub t is the amount of chemical waste in the lake each day, we can write our dynamical system model in two ways. On the left, we write it as wt plus 1 minus w sub t equals r, the amount coming in, minus the amount coming out, which is f times w sub t over v. Or if we use the effective parameter gamma, which is f over v, the dynamical system is wt plus 1 minus w sub t equals r minus gamma times w sub t. And we use the initial condition w naught equals 0 because we assume there was no waste in the lake when the factory was built. How can we analyze this dynamical system? One first thing to do is to look for equilibria. If the variable e is an equilibrium, then if we let wt equals e, it must be that the next day there still is wt plus 1 equal e, amount of waste in the lake. We can plug these into either version of our dynamical system to create an equation for e. For example, from the simplified version, we would get e minus e equals r minus gamma times e. Solving this for e, we can determine that e must be r divided by gamma. Or if you like to write the equilibrium in terms of the original parameters, we would get that e equals r divided by, well gamma is f divided by v, so the equilibrium is r times v over f. Can we solve this equation? Let's add w sub t to both sides of our dynamical system in the form involving gamma, and we get that w t plus 1 is equal to r plus w sub t minus gamma times w sub t. Factoring, we get r plus 1 minus gamma times w sub t. In each time step, we multiply times 1 minus gamma and then add r. We know what to do if r were equal to 0. Then we would have exponential growth or decay. Well, in this case, it's actually decay since the quantity 1 minus gamma is less than 1. Of course, we don't care about this case because if r equals 0, nothing happens. But the question is, what does a non-zero value of r do to the solution? To get an idea of what to do, let's look at a cobweb plot. To make the cobweb plot easy to see, let's set gamma to a ridiculously large value of, let's say, 0 0.2. Then the dynamical system becomes wt plus 1 equals r plus 0 0.8 times the previous waste level w sub t. To use the cobweb applet, we need to write everything in terms of the variable x. In this case, we have r equals 0 and gamma equals 0 0.8. So the function is just 0 plus 0 0.8 times w sub t, which is now x. In this cobweb plot, the blue line is the function 0 0.8x, and the red line is the diagonal, just x. When we iterate the function, f of x equals 0.8x. Each time we multiply by 0.8 and we get exponential decay towards 0. But this function doesn't describe the chemical pollution in the lake case because we haven't added r, the amount of chemical pollution that gets dumped into the lake each day. If I add a value for r, let's say r equals 10, then we'd have 10 plus 0.8 times x. All that changed was that the blue line, which was f, moved up by the amount 10. The slope of the line is still 0.8. And because of this, the cobweb plot looks more or less the same. It, we get exponential decay. But rather than exponential decay to 0, we get exponential decay to some non-zero value. The rate of exponential decay was just like the case when r was 0. Increasing r further, 
Again, doesn't change anything except raising the function, the blue line, and we get exponential decay toward a non-zero value. Now if we imagine that the point corresponding to the equilibrium right here were the origin, then the cobweb plot would look exactly like it did in the case when r was equal to zero. If the origin were right here, we would have exponential decay toward zero. So the idea is we still get exponential decay with a non-zero value of r, here r is 20. The only difference is the equilibrium is moved away from zero, zero. But if we just pretended the equilibrium were zero, zero, we would have the same old exponential decay. Playing with the cobweb plot gives us exactly the trick we need to deal with this number r in the equation. What we're going to do is subtract off the equilibrium and we'll get exponential decay again, as if r weren't there. Let's define a new variable. We'll call it d sub t for deviation from equilibrium. And it will simply be equal to our waste value, w sub t, minus the equilibrium value. So if we were at the equilibrium, d sub t would be equal to zero. And if we're above the equilibrium, d sub t would be positive, And d sub t would be negative if we were below the equilibrium. Can we write down a dynamical system for d rather than for w? We want to calculate an equation for d sub t starting with this dynamical system for w sub t. Let's write it again right here. w sub t plus 1 is r plus 1 minus gamma times w sub t. Now we know that if we set w sub t equal to e and w sub t plus 1 equal to e, it must satisfy the dynamical system. So if we plug in e for w sub t plus 1 and e in for w sub t, this must give us an equation for e. In fact, if we solve this for e, we would get back the same value we had before, that e is r over gamma. But we don't need to solve for e again. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract these two equations. If we take equation a, let's call it, and then subtract equation b, what we would get on the left-hand side is wt plus 1 minus e equals r minus r, well that's 0, plus 1 minus gamma times w sub t minus 1 minus gamma times e. Since this goes away, we can factor the right-hand side to get wt plus 1 minus e equals 1 minus gamma times wt minus e. Well, wt plus 1 minus e is just dt plus 1, given the equation right here, our definition right here. And wt minus e is just d sub t. So therefore we have that d t plus 1 is just 1 minus gamma times d sub t. And this equation should be very familiar. This is just exponential decay. We know how to solve this. We multiply by 1 minus gamma in each time step. So d sub t is just 1 minus gamma to the power of t times the initial condition d naught. A couple more details and we'll be done. The first is, what is the initial condition? We know that w sub naught, the initial condition of w, is 0. And if this is true, what is the initial condition for d? Well, remember the equation over here has to be true for t equals 0, 1, 2, etc. dt equals w sub t minus e for all those different values of t. And in particular, we can plug in t equals 0. This means that d0 is equal to w0 minus e. Well, w0 is 0, so d naught is just negative e. And that gives us our initial condition. We can plug that initial condition to our solution right here to determine that d sub t 
is negative 1 minus gamma to the power of t times the equilibrium E. Remember, d sub t is the deviation from the equilibrium. But of course, we care about the actual chemical waste, w sub t. It's a piece of cake to solve this equation for w sub t. w sub t is just d sub t plus e. So therefore, the amount of chemical in day t must be e plus d sub t or e minus 1 minus gamma to the power of t times e. This is our solution. Where of course e is given by this value r over gamma. Or if you prefer, e is given by r times v over f. Notice a couple of things, just as a sanity check. Indeed, if you plug in t equals 0, you should get that w naught equals 0, because you'll get e minus e. And what happens as t gets very large? As t gets very large, remember 1 minus gamma is less than 1. So 1 minus gamma to the power of t will get very small. And so as t gets very large, w sub t is going to go to e minus 0 as t grows large. So we have exponential decay toward the new equilibrium value E, and the rate of this exponential decay is determined by gamma, which is f over v. The ratio f over v, or gamma, influences both the equilibrium value and the rate at which the chemical pollution approaches the equilibrium value.